Welcome to BYU Radio's Big Stories, a show dedicated to the incredible tales surrounding the opponents of the BYU Cougars. I'm your host, Cleon Wall. Home, it can be a place of comfort. It can be a place of refuge. It can be a place of love. Home is a place all of us want to go at some time in our life, and it's not necessarily where you live. I love UCF, it is home. I've always wanted to come back here. Cassidy Brewer is UCF's assistant softball coach and a former Knight softball player. It's always gonna be home and I love being a Knight. Love is the reason why UCF will always be Cassidy's home. In today's episode, we tell you why the love of one mother guided Cassidy to Orlando and the love of another mother sent her away and then brought her back again. The love of sports is the reason why Cassidy is a member of the Brewer Brood. My first wife um, was a huge uh, football fan. She loved the Steelers. And right off the bat, that, that's what me and her, we kind of got drawn together with. Bobby Brewer is Cassidy's father. And we started having kids. Uh, then, of course, we got, we got doing all the sports with the baseball and the softball and the football. Uh, it, was, it was just like a, a vacation all the time. On the weekends, we would pack up the, the coolers and we'd go off to e every part of the states you could go to. Bobby was one of the driving sports forces in the Brewers' home, teaching and coaching all of his kids in America's pastime. In fact, Bobby is a baseball coaching legend in the town of Apopka, Florida. And I remember uh, back in 2001, we actually went to uh, Lily World Series with my son, and uh, we played for the world title. That was the same year that they uh, televised every game. When we came back home, we had a we had a police escort. We were in limousines. When we got out of town, we had about 20, 25,000 people uh, for a parade when we got back home. So I would say, yeah, I would say. Little Apopka, we, you know, baseball was a big deal back then. It was just kind of the sport in our family that when you are born, you kind of got into. She could play baseball. She could also pitch baseball. And the boys, they all admired her for it, and they were afraid of her because, in a lot of ways, because when she came to the plate to hit the baseball, she'd tear your head off with the ball. The plan was always to go to softball. Um, even when I was little, like, I was really realistic that soft girls don't really thrive in baseball, obviously. Cassie was the best athlete in the family. If Cassie would have been a boy, Cassie would have probably been a first round draft pick. Cassie is so much like her mother. She's a fighter, and her, her mother was a fighter. Uh, Shelly was the, the, the strongest, toughest woman, person I've ever met in my life. And um, Cassie got um, all that strength from her. I mean, Cassie, when, when things are down and, and, and it's tough, she always finds a way to get back up. But Shelly never got the chance to see Cassidy pick herself up when things got tough. She never got to see Cassidy make the transition from baseball to softball. Shelly died when her youngest daughter was just seven years old. Before she was ill, she was very athletic and full of energy and the brain tumor affected her left side of her brain. So everything on the left side kind of shut down and she lost mobility to write and do things um, with her left hand. Um, and then she gained some weight and lost some hair and through just all like the medication and um, surgeries and stuff to try to help, uh, she kind of just transformed into what I kind of remember her as at, at the very end there. I mean, Cassie would come up to her and she would take her little hands and um, she would uh, she'd rub her face and she'd kiss her and she would tell her she was beautiful. It was harder to learn as I got growing up because like I finally realized what happened to her and what was actually wrong was it was an inoperable brain tumor that just uh, um, ruptured one day and there was nothing they could do even if she was on the... Um, on the table to save her. The hardest part of this whole thing is just uh, her not being here, you know, to see uh, Cassie graduate, not seeing her, you know, hit her first home run, um, being able to talk to her about, you know, think girl things, you know, that daddy can't really talk about. Just honestly grateful. Like, I know that losing her at such a young age is really hard and growing up, and um, I've just been really lucky with my stepmom and my grandma and all the other maternal figures that, figures that have come into my life to kind of, like, nurture me and guide me and teach me. Bobby and Shelly never wanted to be far from their kids, even as they got older. 
We, we, we had this vision in our head that we were gonna have all our kids just stay right at home with us, live with us, go to school. Uh, we, you know, we were never one of those people that said, hey, we'd be glad when they're grown and gone. We didn't feel that way. We wanted ours to stay with us forever. The University of Central Florida seemed like a natural landing spot for the Brewers since their hometown is a little over 40 miles away from the Orlando campus. Cassidy's sister played softball for the Knights, but she wasn't sure she wanted to follow in her footsteps. I am a little bit more of an adventurer in our family, so I wanted to go far away and I wanted to experience life without my family. I, rem I remember when we were going through the recruiting process and she asked me one day, you know, Dad, uh, you know, why, why, am, why am I not going to Florida? Why am I not going to South Carolina stuff? Why am I not going to Georgia stuff? Why am I not going to other schools to look at other schools? And I told her, I said, sweetheart, I said, your mother really wanted you to be UCF. She, she always wanted you to stay home. And I want you to stay home. But your mother always wanted you to stay and be a knight. Before Cassidy made her final decision, she made a trip to Shelley's grave. I had gotten to um, her grave. I go and I sit at the bench and I kind of start talking to her about all the possibilities of the schools I have that I could possibly go to and under, and I tell her I understand that dad really wants me to stay close because he wants to watch me. But sitting there, I was just like, I really don't know where to go. I don't know what school's pulling me. I know there's a tie with UCF with Danielle, um, but really kind of please guide me in the direction that I need to go to. And um, I remember sitting there and going home that night, I remember seeing something on the TV and it was like a random UCF commercial. And I was like, okay, this is my sign. Like I really want to pursue UCF. And that night I told my dad and he could not have been more ecstatic that I wanted to go here because in his mind it was like a done deal. We were teary eyed about it because um, I, I knew, I, like I said again, I knew her mother wanted her here. And I think she realized it at that point in time this is where her mother wanted her also. I think we were playing Nebraska my freshman year, and it had been like it had been cloudy all all day. And we were in like the bottom of the eighth. I was a, a little freshman and I was scared out of my mind. I hit the ball dead into their shift, but I just like burnt the outfielder. But right before the pitch, like the clouds opened up in the spot where I hit it and in the video that we had at the time, like literally the ball lands in like the ray of sunshine. And afterwards going back and like watching that video, it was just kind of like a, whoa, like that's wicked. Um, that, and like, it was just one of those moments where I was like, yeah, she was with me for that. I tried to honor my mom by being the woman that I think she would want me to be. Cassidy's tutelage in becoming a better woman and softball player arrived prior to the start of her senior season with the Knights. My name is Cindy Ball Malone, AKA Bear, and I'm the head softball coach at UCF. When I arrived, the first question I actually asked was, what's the pitching like? Because you can always build around your pitcher. Um, and I got, I had the honor of actually talking to one of the best athletes to ever play softball here, Stephanie Best. And she talked about this catcher, Cassidy Brewer. And she just had so many awesome things to say about Cassidy. I think she was one of those kids that um, she was chippy. She had like an edge to her. I was at the time kind of burnt out from the responsibilities of who I was prior to Bear coming in. And she came in and said, hey, like I'm gonna let you be a player again. And really took the stress off of coming to the field every day for me and just letting me play and letting me be a player and kind of like found my obsession and love for softball again. What Cassidy is and, and, and who she is is just this highly intense competitor that can be super focused on the little details in the game. She held me to a very, very high standard, a standard that I had never kind of kept myself to uh, because I kind of just like skirted by and she really came in and she said, you're good, but you're not that good and you can be better. And it was kind of like a, oh crap, I, I got some work to do to impress this, this woman. When Cassidy tried to show off for her coach, it backfired. We were in Mexico and we were down two runs. Um, someone had just hit a ball that the one umpire called caught, but then another umpire overturned it. And so, you know, angry grumpy bear was arguing the call. Well, while, while I was doing that, um, Cassidy was drawing up a, a, a game plan, you know, a play. She and the person that was at second base um, decided to put on a steal of, to third base um, without me knowing. And the runner got thrown out 
and Cassidy just kept running, walking straight to the um, dugout because she knew I was going to pull her out. <laughs> and I did. And uh, that was the, um, the one time that I really, really held her accountable and I told her um, that I could appreciate her strategic uh, thinking, but let me do the coaching and she can do the playing. Um, and so she sat out for a couple games. Bear did exactly what she should have done, which set her butt down. I told her I'm going to continue to hold her accountable because she's that good and I care that much for her. Um, and as hard as, as it was to hold one of your best athletes accountable, um, I think I gained one of the most loyal um, people in my life because of it. And Cassie, from that moment on, respected her greatly, and from that moment on, it seems like they just connected. When I first met Bear, I honestly did not want to go into coaching. I wanted to do a different avenue than everybody in my family because everybody in my family coaches. My dad coaches, my brother coaches at Miami, my sister coaches in Alabama with her husband. Everybody coaches. So I was going to do something different, and then I met Bear, and she just kind of reignited the love of softball for me. Coach Malone could have easily encouraged Cassidy to stick around the program after she graduated. But the bear told her to leave the comforts of UCF and her hometown. Bear thought I needed to go grow up, and I went and got my master's at Florida and did a lot of growing up there under a, a, an amazing staff. And now I've come back home to one of the most influential people in my life, and I get to learn under her and work for her every single day. She gets shocked sometimes because I'll call her, and I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, Brie, I'm, I'm at home. What, what's up? And I'm like, I miss you. Like, it's her day off and I miss you, what are you doing? She doesn't know this and I'll never tell her, tell her this, but she is one of the most influential mother figures in my life. What's most impressive with Cassidy right now is how much I hear from her from like a leadership off the field standpoint. Um, you know when you're a coach and you, you talk about those things with your athletes, you're like, do, do they really, are they listening? Uh, but hearing what she has to say, I'm just, she impresses me. Um, I definitely think that Cynthia Ball Malone was sent straight from my mother. Um, she, knew to, she knew I needed someone to kind of kick me in the butt and say, hey, stop being immature and kind of grow up and it's time. I want Cassie to go as far as she can in, in, in this sport. I think, I think Cassie uh, has only scratched the surface where she can be at. And eventually, I think she's going to have the confidence that she needs to move on to the next level, which would be to try to be a head coach. And when that time comes, Cassidy will probably turn to her mother for advice. I go to her grave. Um, try, I try to go once a month just to kind of go in, and I know she's with me every single step of the way, but fill her in on my life, and I get some weird looks at the cemetery t talking out loud, but um, it's I do talk to her a lot, and if I'm in a situation where I don't really know, I will literally speak out loud. I'm like, Mom, what do I do? And there's a tiny voice in my head. It's probably my own subconscious, but like something's telling me sometimes the way to go and 10 times out of 10, it's been right. If I had that gut feeling, it's not been wrong so far. Don't wanna jinx my mom or anything like that. Cassidy looks forward to sharing a home with her mom in the next life and to embrace Shelly once again. I believe that I'm gonna see my mom again and that she's gonna be healed. The first thing I say, I'm gonna say is, hi, I missed you, and, and hug her. Um, but the next thing is I hope I made her proud. Thanks for listening to BYU Radio's Big Stories. This episode was produced and written by me, Cleon Wall. Music and post-production by Kevin West. Make sure you watch BYU TV's Big Stories by logging on to byusn.com. Big Stories is a production of BYU Radio.